Rush Dooney cl uh, claims error has no rights. The only trouble with such a position is who determines who's right and who's in error? The very Pope who teaches that no one has a democratic right to a moral wrong certainly believes that he has a papal and autocratic right to a moral wrong which is just as bad or even worse than a democratic right. He practices mariolatry and idolatry, which are heinous moral wrongs to Bible-believing Protestants. His quote-unquote church not only teaches these, morals wrongs, uh, these moral wrongs, but also teaches officially under an archbishop's imprimatur that those who oppose these moral wrongs are blasphemers. Mariolatry is nothing but idolatry. It is a breaking of God's holy moral law, as it is given in the second commandment. So the very man who wants to determine for me what is morally right and morally wrong is completely at sea himself. He engages in breaking God's second commandment everywhere he goes on earth, thus inviting God's righteous judgments down upon himself and his followers for three or four generations if God's revelation is true. He's referring specifically to the language of the second commandment. Remember, I've even taught on this program, God implies a just recompense for those who commit idolatry. He says, I will visit the iniquity of the fathers, that is, those who commit adultery. I will visit the iniquity of these fathers upon their children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Who hate me? Those who make idol uh, idols and bow down and worship them. There is a divine recompense for making an idol and bowing down and worshiping it. And if you want to know what that divine recompense is, you have to go to Romans chapter 1. And you will find that it is sodomy. And Ronald Cook understands this, and I hope he gets into it here in the chapter, and I hope I can get into it before my half hour is up here. He continues, he says, We add those last words advisedly, for while the Pope speaks piously of divine revelation, taking precedence over democratic principles, he engages in the worship of Mary everywhere he goes, thus rejecting divine revelation himself. Rome categorically rejects the second commandment, thus rejecting divine revelation. Many modern Christians also learn the second commandment in this way, in this way, particularly, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. They leave out the divine revelation of God's righteous judgment upon idolatry and the truth divinely revealed that this continues to the third and fourth generation of idolaters. How many Christians really believe this today? I can tell you one, me. And as many people as I've told this truth to, I haven't got one person to say it was wrong. There's some that don't quite yet grasp what the Scriptures say, that there is a di direct cause and effect relationship between idolatry and sodomy. And that to them, to the natural mind, is so ridiculous as to be absurd. But that's exactly what the Scripture teaches. Sodomy is a divine recompense for idolatry. And where do we see sodomy so prevalent in the world today? The Roman Catholic Church. And I've said on this broadcast, wherever you find idolatry in the world, you will find sodomy. And wherever you find sodomy in the world, you will find idolatry. Sodomy is a mirror image of the crime of idolatry. It's idolatry is to defile God's glory. So man, so God causes man to def, to defile himself through sodomy. You think sodomy is filthy? Then learn the lesson that making an image or an idol and bowing down and worship it is even more filthy. And that's the lesson in the Scriptures. The second commandment of God Almighty in Exodus chapter 20 and Romans chapter 1. They go together. 
You can't read and understand one without reading and understanding the other. 